Hey everyone, welcome to another Unity tutorial. This time we're going to talk about a skybox shader. And the skybox shader will be a cartoonish looking one. But it is compatible with other environments as well because it looks so pretty. Um, the important thing that we need to notice is the fact that this material will not going to be applied to Unity's skybox thing, you know. Instead, we're going to create a sphere and we will apply the material to the sphere and we're going to kind of fake it. The only important thing that we need to notice is we're not going to use Unity's on sphere model because its UVs are not wrapped correctly according to our needs. It's going to stretch. So instead of using the Unity sphere model, I have created a sphere model from 3ds Max. You can download it from the description box below or you can create your own sphere model or cube model depends on what you want to do in your game or simulation. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, I can, I think we can switch to the tutorial and let's go. Before we begin, just don't forget to import necessary packages via Package Manager. For this case, we will use Lightweight Render Pipeline and Shader Graph Packages. After importing packages, you might want to create the shader graph immediately. But if you do that, you will see this error, which indicates that shader graph is not working. But don't worry, it is normal, because we haven't changed current render pipeline, and currently Unity is using still the legacy render pipeline. For this, we need to create a lightweight render pipeline asset then assign it to Settings. To do that, we need to go to Edit, Project Settings, and Graphics tab. When we do that, we're going to have a field that we can attach our lightweight render pipeline asset. After making initial configurations, we are ready to go. Before start, we need to determine what we actually want to do. As indicated in intro, Skybox shader that we are up to is a gradient shader which means this material is supposed to interpolate between colors. For this, we're going to need to add four color fields. We can add them through the blackboard in the left-hand side. After adding those items, we need to drag them to use it. Then, we need to add a LERP node to have a nice grading between dark and light colors, or vice versa. Usually, sky that we have outside start from a color and changes into another one. For this, we need to access UV data of our mesh to display different mixture ratio of colors according to the height, because it happens as the same way in outside sky dome. For this, we need to add a UV node. And to access its height value, we need to get Y axes. This is because in RGB color space, when we transform it to XYZ color space, G will stand for Y value. And Y axes is the height in unity. So we need to use the Y axes, which means we need to use the G value. Well, it's okay, but where's the G value, right? As you see here, UV node has four dimensional output. So we need to split this value with a split node. Then here it is. Oh, lovely G value. <clears throat> we need to connect this output to LERP node's T input which is responsible from interpolation ratio. Or we can say color mixing ratio as well. Then we can connect LERP node output to color input of the master node. If you have created a PBR shader, you're going to see a PBR master node. But PBR node is influenced with light, shadows, and stuff like that. But we don't want this. We don't want any lighting over sky. You know, there's no shadow 
that casting over to the sky because the sky is not actually an object. It is something that we see from the earth. Despite the fact that we are using a hacky way with creating an object and giving this illusion, we don't want to show any lighting and other side effects. So we don't want to use PBR master node in short. After getting the onlet node, don't forget to change the settings of it, which is in this case, two-sided toggle needs to be checked in order to see the sphere even from inside. Otherwise, you can't see it from inside, so don't forget to check it. All right, so we have created the fundamental structure now, but this is not enough. We want more control over it. One of the things that we want is to control the intensity, or you can say strength. And the other thing is adding middle colors. Middle color is going to help us to be able to create a more natural mixture and a more realistic and pretty look. To do that, we need to add strength values for both colors. I named them light and dark colors, but you can name it whatever you want. Now we're going to need a power node to increase color strength with the variables that we have just created. Also, we need to get one minus of g-axis in order to access to the other color which comes from the bottom. And we're gonna need to do the same power node operation with the light color strength instead. Now we're gonna need to lerp again with new edge color properties that we have created. And we will define lerping amount with those power node outputs as follows. For dark edge and for light edge, we're going to need two additional lerp in the end. Here we go. We can change intensity as follows now. It's only a matter of your color palette now to decide what you want to do, a night or some kind of ocean, a beach, whatever you want. It's only up to you to decide which color you're going to use. But I'd like to share what colors I used in my intro, which if you like them, you can use those colors in your skies. All right, now it's time to add stars. We need to add a vector one variable called star bending. And we're gonna change its type to slider. Then we're gonna set its default value to 0.3. Next thing that we're gonna do is, we're gonna add a Boolean value named as enable stars in order to control whether stars are open or not. Now we can jump back to nodes again. First things first, we need a simple noise and its value will be 54. I found this value while making tweaks, so there's no complicated math behind it. Then we're gonna need to replace the color of some areas because I wanna use this noise to mask the stars randomly. To do that, I'm adding a node called replace color. Then, from input needs to be changed to noises white color so you can do that with color picker just as i do okay now we need to do is add a tiling and offset node to control the tiling to control it i'm going to add a vector 2 to the blackboard and i'm going to name it as start tiling the default values will be 3 by 3. To move the stars, we need to access to the time node. Then I create a local vector 1 as a multiplication value. Although, I don't want to offset the y-axis, so I create a vector 2 node, and I'm only assigning x value to, to time.
then I multiply it with this vector van value that I have created and the vector van value is supposed to be 0 0.008 so it is also an experimental value that I have created while trying to find the best composition then I plug the multiply nodes output to offset input All right, now it's time to create a Vernoy node which will use the output of our tiling node and I set angle offset of the Vernoy node to 4 and cell density to 32. Then we're gonna need a blend node for masking Vernoy. Base input supposed to be connected to replace color and blend supposed to be connected to Vernoy. I set the blend mode to lighten because I'm gonna invert the colors in a moment. But before that, I set the opacity to 1.5. Now it's time to add a minimum node, and I will add a vector 1 to control it. So this value will be our threshold. And which is in this case, it will be 0.25. Next, I'm adding a 1 minus to kind of invert it. Then I replace colors of it in order to get these stars which we have masked. Don't forget, in this node, from color should be as follows. In order to remove that gray color which we see. Then range value will be 0.24. You can leave the fuzziness as zero for now. Good. Now we can blend our stars with actual skybox. We will achieve it with alert node. We're gonna get the skybox output to A input and the star is gonna be go to B input. Then we're gonna drag the star's bending value and connect it to T, which the T is controlling the blending ratio in this case. All right. Now we need a blending node in order to have the control of blending with this toggle that we have created earlier. Our star plus skybox output should go to blend input. And we connect the actual skybox to base input. Then we set the blend node to lighten. As you can see, we have an opacity value, and we want to change this value from 1 to 0, according to this toggle, which is in this toggle is enabled, we want to make it 1, and if it is disabled, we want to make it 0, which will control it, like, it will disable and enable it accordingly. To do that, I am dragging enable stars boolean to canvas, and then I'm adding a branching node. Now we are free to connect it to blend node's opacity input. Seems like everything is done, so we can connect the output of our blending to the unlit node's color input. So we should be fine then. Alrighty, let's jump to the editor and toggle the enable stars. And... Surprise, motherfucker! What? We don't see the stars as white. Why is that? This is because we use the noise as base color. But instead, we should use Vernoy as base color. So, let's just swap them. We need to change the replace color with picking the gray pixels from here. Because I guess I've made a little mistake when I was picking the colors. So, you might want to do it as the same. You can do it with the color picker as follows. Last but not least, let's crank the branching value to 2 to see the stars more clearly. Such a romantic. As a note, you can increase the star scale to see them smaller with Vernoy blend node with the changing the opacity of it.
All right, that's it for now. I hope you're satisfied with the result. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to press the like button here. And if you want your friends to create lovely shaders as well, you can share this video on Discord channels or your fancy Facebook group. Without further ado, I, I would finish this, but um, I just want to say your comments are quite precious for me because I get feedback from you over there. So you can make comments in the down comment section below. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.